In the nightly theatre of the heavens, there's more to stargazing than the stars, the planets, and the moon. There are special acts, celestial vagabonds whose unpredictability makes them all the more exciting, cosmic show-offs such as meteors, asteroids, and most famously, comets. Comets come from beyond the planets, exotic wanderers that for weeks, even months, can steal the show. Visitors like Halley's Comet, which appears just once in 76 years. Comets are the nomads of our solar system. Some travel on random elliptical orbits, hurtling among the planets. Kamikaze comets plunge into the sun. Others just graze its surface. To understand comets, we must travel back nearly five billion years to the birth of the solar system. From a primeval nebula of gas and dust, the sun first coalesced. Then, from the heavier elements, the inner planets formed, solid little worlds like Earth and Mars. As the sun grew hotter, it generated a solar wind. Upon it were carried lighter elements. They formed the outer planets, gas giants like Jupiter and Neptune. And far beyond, a third of the way to the nearest star, settled a vast cloud of icy debris. Like a shell enveloping the planets, it's so diffuse you could pass through without noticing. This is the Oort cloud, where comets incubate. Every so often, one is dislodged from the equilibrium of Oort by a twitch in the gravitational interplay between the Sun and its neighboring stars. Thus begins a tumble toward the planets, the comet relentlessly drawn inward by the sun. Tails of gas and dust develop as the comet reaches the inner solar system. Ices vaporize. They stream off as fluorescing gas, millions of kilometers through space. All of this from a nucleus that might be no bigger than a football stadium. The tails only exist within the inner planets as the comet bathes in the warmth of the sun. And the gas tail always points away from the sun, blown backward by the solar wind. As it swings round the sun, this comet is returning to the cold outer depths, where its tails will disappear. From Earth, comets seem to hang motionless in the sky. In reality, they're traveling at many kilometers a second. But such are the stresses of the inner solar system that a comet nucleus may break up. With several fragments now streaming material, the tail can flare magnificently. In the wake of comets come shooting stars, properly known as meteors. As Earth intersects the trails of comets, Dust burns up in our atmosphere, and meteors shower the sky. For a second or two, even a tiny grain can spark the heavens. Larger fragments, often originating from asteroids, produce fireballs, and if they survive to the surface, they become known as meteorites. Set in silver at the base of a black structure called the Chaba is possibly the most famous meteorite of all. In Mecca, at the time of the Hajj, millions assemble at this birthplace of Muhammad. Like Muslims throughout the world, the pilgrims pray toward their sacred stone, believed to be a gift to Abraham from the Archangel Gabriel. But there's a more prosaic view. 
Some scientists suggest the stone is one of the countless missiles that have pocked our planet since it was born. In other words, a meteorite burnt black by atmospheric friction as it careened to Earth. Australia, a land of contrasts. Beyond the urban fringe lies a vast and open continent. With its arid climate and undeveloped landscape, the outback is a mecca itself for those who seek traces of meteorites. These are the Henbury craters, dug by a meteorite that had broken into a clutch of missiles. And this is Wolf Creek, blasted by a similar sized projectile that remained intact. The crater is almost a kilometer across. The impactor was the size of a large house and probably metal. Were it less substantial, even a rock 20 stories high, it would have vaporized in the atmosphere. Wolf Creek is 300,000 years old. Gosser's Bluff is older, 140 million years and 22 kilometers wide. Arizona and another pockmark in the desert. This is Meteor Crater, gouged by a lump of nickel and iron 40 meters wide. The crater is well over a kilometer. 50,000 years old, it still speaks of cosmic energy. And that energy keeps coming. In 1972, this space rock, twice the size of the Arizona impactor, was caught on camera. Luckily, it skipped off the upper atmosphere and back into space. 1992, during high school football on America's east coast, a fireball. It fragmented and some chunks were recovered as meteorites. Here's the incident from Pittsburgh. Siberia, 1908. This projectile, 60 meters wide, didn't reach the ground. It exploded in the atmosphere with the energy of a nuclear bomb. Over 2,000 square kilometers of uninhabited forest was flattened. Had this happened over New York, millions would be dead. As our partner in space, the moon is testimony to Earth's vulnerability. Lifeless and barren, no ocean, nothing hides these lunar craters, each one the print of an impact. The moon has some 30,000 craters, uneroded by wind or water, a pristine record of wax from space. Per square kilometer, Earth takes as many hits. Strip away our atmosphere, our seas, our vegetation, and all geological movement, and this would be our planet. <laughs> 